right now, Christians are professing that prophecy is in the making, as an Israeli organization has started to mint coinage, which displays a 70-year fulfillment of Israel. It represents the gathering of Israel together again, giving all glory to Trump's image which is in front of King Cyrus on the front of the coin and a rebuilt third temple on the back. The coin itself paired with the current geopolitical state of affairs is shocking, as it indeed represents that we are on the verge of a cataclysmic period in time known as the end times. However, one specific aspect of this coin caught my attention, that is the image of Donald Trump on the front paired with the symbol of peace, a dove, on the back. It reminded me that before Donald Trump was elected president, he was referred to as Donald the Dove. Why is that? Well, back in 1983, a well-known photographer named William Coupon had photographed him with a dove when he was at the pinnacle of his career. But what did Donald Trump have to do with a dove that would warrant this picture? While it's difficult to find, William Coupon is on record at least twice, stating that the photo shoot was for a Manhattan Inc. magazine edition. He states on time.com, quote, I shot Donald Trump twice. This is my favorite. Trump was offering his services as a peace negotiator between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Later on Tao Style, he writes, He, Donald Trump, was 32 years old when I took that photograph in 1983. He was attempting to, independently, negotiate an agreement between the Israelis and Palestinians at that time. So when the news first broke in the Trump presidency, that he would try to attempt Middle East peace, it took many by surprise. Many thought that this was Trump being flamboyant, that he would, even recklessly, display how he is the chief negotiator by trying to tackle Middle East peace. However, many do not realize that this has been on Trump's mind for a very, very long time. Over 35 years, to be exact. While many think that Trump happened to grab the presidency by happenstance, just due to a cascade of events in the geopolitical sphere, many peculiar things tell us otherwise. For one, there has been some predictive programming of a Trump presidency via cartoons, as with the Simpsons episode in 2000 called Bart to the Future, or this eerily accurate heavy metal cartoon called The Wall by Peter Cooper from July 1990 which even foretells of a Trump wall. But even more disturbing is Trump's direct integration with the White House back in the early 1980s, which relates back to the photo of the dove I showed before. The photo was used in this Manhattan Inc. magazine edition entitled Donald Trump's Ultimate Deal. In this magazine, Donald tells us how he can solve nuclear arms proliferation across the world What's shocking about this article, as I mentioned prior, is that Trump states that he has been in close talks with the White House ever since the early 80s, as well as his plan with which he would disarm the world. In referencing to his intertwining with the White House, he states, I'm dealing at a very high level on this, he said, with people in Washington, in the White House. There was too much at stake for him to risk the wrong kind of exposure on the subject, the subject being nuclear proliferation. In summary, he states, referring to the rest of the world outside US and Russia, most of those pre-nuclear countries are in one form or another dominated by the US and Soviet Union. Between those two nations, you have the power to dominate any of those other countries. So we should use our power of economic retaliation and they use their powers of retaliation. And between the two of us, we will prevent the problem from happening. So Trump's solution is a partnership with Russia to subdue other countries from obtaining nuclear arms. Other than teaming up with Russia, what were his specific plans? Well, he states, again, referring to the other countries, maybe we should offer them something. I'm saying you start off nicely as possible. You apply as much pressure as necessary until you achieve the goal. You start off telling them, let's get rid of it. If that doesn't work, you start cutting off aid, and more aid, and then more. 
you do whatever is necessary so these people will have riots in the street so they can't get water so they can't get band-aids so they can't get food because that's the only thing that's going to do it the people the riots Trump is so bold in this interview that he even declares sanctions against allies like France since they have the nuclear bomb. He states they've got the bomb, but they don't have it now with the delivery capability they will have in five years. If they don't give it up, and I don't mean reduce it, and I don't mean stop, because stopping doesn't mean anything, I mean get it out. If they didn't, I would bring sanctions against that country that would be so strong, so unbelievable. End quote. So these are the thoughts of Donald Trump 35 years ago, that he was already entwined in the White House, that he was already attempting Middle East peace, and that, at least in reference to nuclear disarmament, he is prepared to work with Russia to subdue the rest of the world into riots by massive sanctions and other means. Well, isn't it interesting then that 35 years ago from these statements, Donald Trump is pursuing Middle East peace? that he is being investigated for a variety of collusions with Russians, and also publicly states that the two should moderate the Israeli-Palestinian peace, that just as he was prepared to bring massive sanctions on France 35 years ago, that he states today he will sanction European allies if they continue to deal with Iran in the nuclear Iran deal. So it seems to me that one, Trump and perhaps the elites, have been grooming Trump for this event for nearly four decades. And two, his thoughts of the past seem to be reflective of what he is actively doing right now. Now, I find it humorous that most will say I'm a Hillary-loving liberal because of my stance on Donald Trump. That could be farther from the truth. The reality is I'm a conservative Christian who has discernment on people's character as well as biblical prophecy. I understand that this Trump presidency is hardly by mistake or chance odds, and that all the focus on Trump, Russia, and the United States seems to have originated from a plan Trump had nearly four decades ago. While it seems Russia and the United States are headed steadily into war, could this be Hegelian dialectic? Could the two, in reality, just be working for the same common beast system goals, but from opposite ends of the spectrum? I'll let you decide. But you have to admit, the parallelisms between then and now are pretty stunning. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Hope you like this. Please do subscribe and like. God bless.